What's going on, guys? I saw this article yesterday on Twitter, and I said, you know what? This is something very interesting, and we need to talk about in this channel because we talked about these concepts a lot in this channel. HTTPS, we talked about ESNI, we talked about TLS 1.3, and China is now blocking all encrypted HTTPS traffic that uses TLS 1.3 and ESNI. Why? We're gonna find out. So guys, China has this concept of a great firewall, which is basically pretty much everything that comes inbound to China servers or IP addresses or outbound from that area. Any traffic that goes from that area goes to the China's ISP, whatever that thing is, and goes through the great firewall. So this great firewall is in control of the government. So they can block stuff, they can monitor, they can sniff stuff. They, they are so good at this stuff, right? And we, for the longest time, they were their job was very easy with, with pure HTTP. But these days, our connections are secure. And what does that mean? That means you, as a browser, and the destination site has end-to-end -end encryption as long as the certificate that have been served from that server is actually issued by, by that server. And it's, it's very hard to determine that, right? You can look at the certificate here, you can trust the root, you can trust the certificate authority, but it says like, hey, this is the locality, this is San Francisco, California, which is where ZNet is located at, right? However, there are concepts, right? The, the content is encrypted. However, there are certain stuff before the content that is not really encrypted yet. And we recently figured out ways to encrypt that stuff. So let's talk about those. DNS, Domain Name Server, which is the ability of give me zidnet.com, given zidnet.com, Give me the IP address of zidnet.com so I can put it in a TCP packet and I, I can I, I can do a send request and I do a send ACK and all that to establish a connection right between this and the server. However, that DNS request asking for the IP address of zidnet.com or google.com or anything, for the longest time, it's not encrypted. It's UDP. It's a pure UDP packet. Right? So it's not encrypted. So technically, the Great Firewall of China can, if it wants to, block you from going to a website. So if, it, if, if China wants to block Twitter, very simple. If China wants to block Facebook, very simple, right? Checks for Facebook.com, DNS queries, and block them. However, this has been recently solved, almost, with a DOH, DNS over HTTPS. So now... The, we establish a communication between us and any DNS provider that supports encryption, and we start sending our DNS queries to that encrypted. So technically, the firewall, again, we're going to add a quote here, cannot see that traffic. All right. So, yeah, cannot see that traffic. So, so cannot know your DNS queries. There is, however, one trick up of... Of, up of the ISP sleeves that almost most governments uses to block stuff even if the DNS didn't work. Let's say you have the IP address and you want to go directly to the IP address, right? What do you do? There is a concept of server name indication and this is a TLS extension. This TLS extension is part of the handshake, the TLS handshake that says, hey, I want to establish a communication between moi as a client and you, but it is, it's encrypted. So let's do a, a three-way handshake for the TCP and let's do a, a handshake for TLS 1.3, right? Or TLS 1.2. And I want, I only know your IP address, but I'm interested in this particular server name or host name, or DNS entry. And that is the server name indication. So you, when you go to that, do a handshake, you specify the name of the server. Why? Why do we have that? The reason is one public IP address can host multiple websites. And if you want to do that with security, 
during the security mechanism, how do I know which certificate to be served on the server, right? You need to give an indication in the TLS handshake. And guys, I really suggest that you watch the TLS videos that we made here, the ESNI video, the CSNI videos to learn more about this stuff. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just gloss over this idea a little bit. So yeah, so you do server name indication says, hey, I want this particular server, right? Despite it's the same IP address, you can specify multiple host names in that. And using that, the server, the destination server will know that, hey, oh, you want Google, uh, for example, uh, mail.google.com, right? Or gmail.google.com or Google plus.google.com. It's dead now, but you get the idea. That's, that's the idea. You can serve different certificates and you know, the server also knows what content to serve you based on, on this. So this, this has saved a lot of money because IP addresses are expensive. You cannot spin up a IP address for every single stuff you want. I mean, IPv6, this changes a little bit, but back in IPv4, there's only limited and so expensive to have a static IP address for every website. So you do this, server name indication. What's the problem with this? It's unencrypted. Yes, it is part of the TLS uh, hello, right? The TLS extension, the TLS handshake. But it's unencrypted. So the firewall, the great firewall of China or any firewall or any ISP can still and still uses SNI to block uh, to block sites from visiting certain websites, right? So now even if DNS is encrypted, we can rely on this. Nick Sullivan and team from Cloudflare have figured this out. They created for us encrypted SNI extension, but that thing is only working with TS 1.3 because it's a brand new thing. They just came up with it like uh, two years ago, re recently, even recently. So yeah, this thing is encrypted, encrypted SNI. How? I can explain a little bit. During the DNS over HTTPS query, it says, hey, I want to go to Twitter.com. So your client, first of all, establishes a secure connection between itself and the DNS over HTTPS uh, provider and says, okay, let's establish communication. Done, this is encrypted now. So the firewall, quote unquote, cannot see anything in the between. There is one way that the firewall, anything in the middle can actually see by serving the certificate of, of itself, right? But I'm not gonna go through that. And you can find out by clicking that padlock. But it's unencrypted. So now I say, hey, I want to go to twitter.com. The firewall will not see it because it's encrypted, right? It's in end to end. But my end is the browser and the other end is the basically the server, the DNS server. Now I say, give me a twitter.com. Give me the, okay, here's the IP address of twitter.com. And it's all encrypted. Nobody sees that. While you give me the twitter.com, the server also gives you, hey, by the way, this is the public key of twitter.com. This is one way of doing it. It's part of the handshake, part of the uh, Diffie-Hellman parameters. It says, hey, this is the public key of, of twitter.com. Use it when you want to establish the TLS handshake between yourself and Twitter IP address. Encrypt pretty much everything, including that uh, SNI stuff, the extension. So when you want to send an, uh, okay, I want to communicate with, t with the twitter.com, let's say the IP address is one, two, three, four. And I say, okay, let's establish a communication between moi and yourself. And says, yeah, this is, we're going to start generating uh, TLS 1.3, for example, because SNI is only supported with TLS 1.3. And says, yeah, okay, well, let's, let's, let's agree. Uh, uh, this is what I support, this is the ciphers I support, and uh, let's make a guess quickly. So this is TLS 1.3, I'm gonna make a guess. Uh, I'm gonna pick uh, Electric Curve Diffie-Hellman, and uh, I'm gonna pick a a a AES, and then boom, this is what I picked, but I, this is other stuff I support as well. And I want the extension, server name indication, twitter.com, let's say blog.twitter.com, and I'm gonna encrypt it with the public key that I got from the DOH server. So now it's this is encrypted. And you take that thing and you basically send the TLS hello, the client hello. 
Now, pretty much everything is encrypted. Only whomever have the, the private key of Twitter, in this case, even Cloudflare or, or the DOH server doesn't have that, only Twitter does, can actually encrypt that. And who is that? It's that Twitter, that's the server you are actually communicating to. So we'll use that uh, public, private IP, a uh, private key to decrypt the ASNI, to find out which server you want, to actually serve you the certificate, serve you, serve you the content that you want, right? So the, it will complete the TLS handshake. It will, it will do, say, so okay, the, you went, you pick these ciphers. I'm good with this cipher. Let's continue, complete the TLS 1.3 in one, one route trip. So just, just poof, immediately complete, and you're gonna serve the content. And even the firewall cannot see this. So this extension just, just blocked pretty much everything. And all of a sudden, the firewall is blind. It cannot see anything without terminating TLS. Without terminating TLS, the firewall is blind. And that's bad for China. So what's the solution? Block the damn thing. So if you're using TLS 1.3 and encrypted SNI, and it's very clear the indication that, oh, this is the TLS uh, extension called ex uh, encrypted SNI. Let's, let's, let's actually Google that. Uh, RFC. Let's just show you how this is it. This is it, guys. An encrypted SNI extension. That's exactly it. It's gonna look something like that. Those are all the details. I'm gonna have the the links below, guys, if you're interested to know more about this stuff, right? But yeah, it's blocked in in China, and this tells me this tells me a lot of information about China. If you think about it, right? That means they don't, they can't always serve you the certificates. They don't terminate the TLS. I mean, if you think about it, guys, if they serve you, act like a man in the middle and take kind of just do this, reply back with a, a wildcard certificate signed by China and trusted by pretty much all devices that is in China and says then then the communication between you and and the firewall is terminated and the firewall itself makes a request on behalf of you and that's encrypted and that's in this uh, in this thing is that the, the firewall or the uh, government acts like a complete man in the middle I don't know why they're not doing that. I'm not giving them ideas, but pretty much uh, that what what that requires is every single device in China have to have specific certificate, root certificate installed in it in order for the communication to work between you and the firewall, right? Otherwise, the firewall will serve you something that your device will reject. And if you use Firefox, that the Firefox or any browser will look through this chain certificate and we say, okay, this root certificate is, uh, yeah, this this is trusted because it's on it's on the new device and most of the devices in China are made in China, obviously, and and when it's made in China, they're gonna install these root certificates. That tells me something off is going on there, and I don't know what exactly it. Apparently, they can do this successfully. That's why you know what, let's just block the S one point three all of it altogether. Yeah, it's very interesting to me. It's very, very interesting. I want to learn more about that. What do you guys think about this news? And uh, I'm going to see you on the next one. You guys stay awesome. Goodbye.